Today on the farm, I'm gonna be using the 12 row KMC strip till to strip cotton rows in this wheat field. I'm pulling the KMC strip till with an 8335R John Deere using Green Star Guidance. This is what our rows look like that I'm making. I'm running a shank in the ground about 18 inches and I have a wavy disc behind it on either side. Just tilling out this little, little area. Not doing a lot of tillage. We don't want to till up much ground no more than we have to because the more you till, the more weeds you will get. And the purpose of stripping cotton rows in a wheat field is one, to reduce weed pressure, so that reduces herbicide use, and two, preserve moisture. So the more tilling we do, the more ground we open up, the less moisture we will have. That moisture will evaporate out of here and the more weeds we will germinate. We don't want weeds and we don't want to lose any moisture. We want to preserve all the moisture we can. The only reason I'm able to come out here and run is because of this wheat. It's been hot here. I don't know if you see way over there, we got irrigations running. But this wheat has protected this soil from being dried out by the sun. And so there's still moisture down in this dirt and I'm able to pull this 12 or strip till about six miles an hour across here without any problems. If we had not had this wheat here and I came out here and tried to pull this strip till, it would roll up big, huge red boulders. It would break shear bolts. It'd just make a mess. So the wheat has kept this ground soft because it's preserved the moisture. And we want to make these rows out here just as fine as we can. Just make them just as tiny, as narrow as we can so we don't lose much moisture and we still create a deep furrow for the roots for the cotton plant. This is the setup we got today. We put new cultures on the front, really big cultures that we got placed right in front of the shank so they're opening up the ground right ahead of the shank. I moved a wavy disc. We did have them both on the back, but we moved one to the front, one to the back, and we got them right close to the shank super narrow in here see one here and one there normally we run them one out here and one right here throwing a bed together but we have them one front one back and we got them really close together up on that shank has been going in and out again it's not working out about a couple of rounds some of y'all have mentioned before about opening the windows and the doors it does not make it cooler um, out here in this wide open field with the sun beating down it's over 100 degrees out there uh, in your yard at your house you know it may be like 90 I think the high today according to the phone is in the mid 90s but out here where the sun's beating down it's over 100. According to the screen here inside the cab, it's 113 in here. And it is not pleasant. Sometimes when I uh, pick up on the end, it lightens the load on the tractor and the air conditioner will kick on briefly. But then uh, when we get to going back the other way, it, it kicks back off. There is an electrical issue that we cannot or have not been able to solve. And it's getting difficult to run this tractor.
up bearing on this wavy disc to go out. But luckily, I keep a couple of bearings pre already pressed in because they go in with snap ring. A couple of bearings already pressed in on wavy disc waiting up here to shop. So all I gotta do is zip this one off, put another one on. to stop to put the culture on and went ahead and topped my fuel off while I'm stopped because I don't have enough fuel to finish the field and since I'm already out of the field just with fuel up now so I'll have to come back later. I've been watching that rain over there that's actually the rain you see over there that's actually in Alabama about five miles from here but we're getting a few little road raindrops hitting the windshield in the hood out here finally getting a little bit of rain i think if it don't rain no harder than what it's doing right now i can finish this field i don't have but i don't know it's, it's 5 40 now i got probably two more hours out here i can finish this field up but i'll take a rain delay i'll take it it was hot today we use a little bit of water on the ground it's starting to rain pretty good over there I can see actually water standing in the rows in that cotton field over there. However, I'm not going to stop because you can scare rain off. I'm going to keep running until it gets muddy out here because if you stop, the rain will stop. You just got to pretend like it's not raining. Keep on running until it gets too muddy to run. I'm telling you this from years and years of farming experience, that's how it works, pumps in time. Don't stop when it starts raining. You keep running until it's raining enough. Then you stop. As long as nothing's stopping up, we're going to keep on running. The danger with running in the rain is we farm red clay down here in South Georgia. And uh, that clay gets sticky. So I'm watching, making sure nothing's coming up, getting sticky back here on the strip till. Those wavy discs can fill up with uh, clay start eating out a, instead of making a little smooth, clean, tilled road, it'll be digging a ditch. And we don't want a ditch out here, we want a little smooth, tilled road. And so, when we introduce moisture into the equation with this rain, we have to really stay laser focused on what our rows are looking like, make sure nothing's stopping up or dragging, getting gummed up. That, that becomes crucial at this point. As long as we're not gumming up, we're gonna keep on rolling. It's been raining now for about 35 minutes, 40 minutes. If this was a conventionally tilled field, we would have put the tractor in the barn already because all that mud would be on the tires would be making a mess. But since it is strip tilling in wheat, the ground's not muddy. I have all this wheat out here, all this wheat straw. There is no mud on my tires. We are not making a mess. We had decent ground moisture. It was not wet, but it was some moisture in the ground where we were stripping at. Now it's a little bit better moisture, so we're able to do a little bit better job. But again, if, it, if we had conventionally tilled this field instead of strip tilling it, I would not be able to lay rows off out here right now because it'd be too muddy. So 
another great reason to strip till. You can run in a light rain. As long as it don't get out of hand out here and start coming up everything, I can keep running. And the, the strip till in the week, of course, saves moisture. We'll have moisture out here when all the other irrigation drawn and running, it'll still be wet out here. Or still be moisture in the ground out here. I love strip tilling, strip tilling in wheat is the absolute best way to plant cotton in South Georgia. You can't do peanuts this way. It's, that don't work. You gotta you have to do tillage on peanuts. You have to bottom plow or you won't get them out of the ground. But the cotton you can do this. In our area, nobody that I'm aware of does corn in any strip till scenario. Everybody conventionally tills corn. I know up you get around Minnesota and all out that way they do a lot of strip till and no till even no till in this particular part of the country is not possible um, i wish it was if, if no till was possible you know every farmer would jump for joy Far farmers aren't seeking out tillage you're not saying hey what's what's another way i can spend a bunch of money uh we would all all farmers would stop tilling if it was feasible in their applications. It's feasible in some places, in some places it's not feasible. Uh, my part of the country is a part of the country where no-till is not feasible. It does not work here. We have red clay. If you don't till it at all, you will not grow anything at all. Um, it's just a fact of life right here. You may can do no-till in your part of the country, just can't do it right here. We have a lot of red clay. But for now, we are doing a little bit of strip tilling, and it looks like it is going beautifully. I'm laying my turn row off now on one end of the field. I don't use guidance to do turn rows. I like to do them manually. I get a pretty good result out of it. It's more of a feel for me. I, I can feel when the tractor goes left or right. I keep my eyes fixed down here on the other end of the field on a target and I can lay it off pretty straight uh, usually as long as we don't encounter any problems here sometimes it'll be a hard spot where we loaded a semi in the past or something and you hit it it may give me a little wobble in the road but in general I lay these turn rows off manually and usually do a pretty fair job with it Well, that's it for today. We stripped this whole, this entire wheat field. We got our turn rows laid off around the end so the cotton picker has somewhere to turn around when he's picking this cotton, get lined back up on the row. We did have about two hours in the very hottest part of the day where the air condition didn't work. It started back working miraculously. And then uh, we caught a little rain, cooled things down about 20 degrees. Looks like we still got another rain right over yonder may get a little bit more water out here but anyway that's it for today thank y'all for watching see you next time